in a world where every child needs protection, Haley Penny will always need more than most. She trusts everyone without condition, especially her parents and her teachers. But by the fall of 2010, the once perpetually cheerful 10-year-old had spent months fearful and deeply withdrawn. And we were at our wit's end. I mean, we were literally racking our brain in tears trying to wonder what's going on with our child, you know? On an afternoon the pennies will never forget, the cause came home on the body of their disabled child in the form of scrapes and heavy bruising. Injuries and investigation quickly confirmed were inflicted by a teacher's aide in Haley's New Caney ISD special needs classroom. Was she mad at you? Yeah. Why was she mad? It hurt me. If I was to put bruises and marks on my child like that, or any child for that matter, they'd put me in jail. I'd be in jail for child abuse. How are they different? But in this case, the teacher's aide who hurt Haley walked away. Montgomery County prosecutors claim they lacked evidence to convince a grand jury, the kind of proof that could have come from a surveillance camera if the classroom had just had one. They need to be in the classrooms where children can't defend themselves, where a child who's not able to come home and say, Mom and Daddy, so-and-so's hurting me. That's where they need to be. Fox 26 has learned the very same aide was reprimanded for mistreating Haley and other disabled students just five months before. And yet New Caney ISD failed to tell the pennies of the alleged abuse or to install surveillance to ensure it didn't happen again. Haley's abuse was hardly isolated. Over the past year, we've uncovered more than a half dozen cases in the Houston area alone of disabled kids in isolated, self-contained classrooms who've been preyed upon by the very people who are supposed to protect them. All we can say is that this teacher broke our hearts. In Fort Bend ISD, a nine-year-old autistic student was repeatedly imprisoned in a closed filing cabinet by her special ed teacher. The same now former educator at Juan Seguin Elementary stands accused of kicking, striking, and verbally abusing other disabled kids. The classroom had no camera. At Deer Park ISD's Fairmont Middle School, a special ed teacher disciplined an autistic boy with spray bottle blast to the face at point blank range. Witnesses say the same educator mocked and physically abused other deeply disabled students, none of whom were capable of crying out. The classroom where it all happened had no camera. You know the truth. You see from a camera exactly what happened exactly what happened. Yes. <gasps> and then there's Katie ISD's Exley Elementary, from where Leah Sullivan's deeply autistic son, William, came home with multiple bruises and abrasions, but no explanation from the school. His special ed teacher was quietly reprimanded for causing the injuries, but allowed to remain in the classroom. No camera was deployed. It, it's, it's a rude awakening to realize, wow, that the people you trust with your children, you can't trust. <laughs> it's not there anymore. It's not ever going to be there. Two months later, at the very same school, the same special ed teacher and two aides were fired after whistleblowers reported the trio forcing vinegar-soaked cotton balls in the mouths of autistic students as a form of discipline. Criminal charges were filed and later dismissed when Fort Bend County prosecutors couldn't convince a grand jury to indict. Again, no surveillance video was available for review. You have to ask yourself why they don't want them. Why do they, why do they not want us to see what's happening in the classrooms? Leslie Phillips serves on the board of the National Autism Association and says school districts have no credible excuse for prohibiting cameras. It's like throwing kerosene on a fire and expecting it not to burn. If you put uh, poorly trained teachers and aides in a classroom with children who have these challenges and nobody to watch out for them. So why is it in 21st century America, where nearly everyone is under some type of surveillance, that those who run our public schools believe 
like our most vulnerable students should be purposely denied this protection. When you put cameras in every classroom, you say to this teacher who's been teaching 20, 25 years, I don't trust you anymore. Attorney Chris Tritico represents both school districts and Houston's teachers union. He argues it's unfair to surveil thousands of educators to prevent the misconduct of a few. There's a lot of things that, that happen in that classroom that are not abusive, that are protected by law for the teacher to do, that they have every right to do. But a parent might say, I don't like that. It doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't make it illegal. But Tritico concedes teachers have no legal right to privacy in the classroom, a fact confirmed by University of Houston law professor Peter Linzer, who says even federal laws designed to protect the privacy of students do not prohibit cameras in the classroom. There is no privacy right here, and particularly the, if the parents approve of it, in addition, Linzer points to section 26009 of the Texas Education Code, which expressly allows the videotaping of students without parental approval for the purpose of child safety. Even if a bad teacher, you know, gets on his best behavior, at least we stop the bad teacher from doing bad things. So I think that these school districts are using an excuse I don't believe they have a leg to stand on. And yet Tritico knows of not a single public school district in Texas that's deployed cameras to protect disabled kids. Advocate Lewis Geigerman, who's fought for families in dozens of special ed abuse cases, believes he knows exactly why. They're protecting the institution and not the child. It's a blanket policy that's made the injuries suffered by disabled kids like Haley Penny acceptable collateral damage and that's left the parents of special needs victims feeling both helpless I don't trust anybody anymore and deeply betrayed their urgent and continuing question just how many voiceless kids could a camera lens save from harm Greg Grugan Fox 26 News